Numbers chapter 21 verses 4 through 9. Then they set out from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, and the people became impatient because of the journey. The people spoke against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we load this miserable food. The Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they beat the people, so that many people of Israel died. So the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, because we have spoken against the Lord and you. Intercede with the Lord, that he may remove the serpents from us. And Moses interceded for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent, and set it on a standard, and it shall come about that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, he will live. And Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on the standard. And it came about that if a serpent bit any man, when he looked to the bronze serpent, he lived. Viewing audiences, John chapter 3 verses 14 to 16 says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes may in him have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. This was a prophecy that Jesus would be hung on the cross. Here, Moses lifting up the serpent is recorded in today's passage in Numbers chapter 21. Then what is the lesson of this incident? And how is it related with the cross of Jesus? Through this message, let us remember the meaning of Jesus being hung on the cross once again and realize how we should lead our Christian life. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will receive great grace and strength in the name of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, members of 3,600 branch churches all over the world, including the United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Honduras, Peru, Argentina, Germany, France, Russia, Belgium, Netherlands, and African countries including Kenya, Uganda, and Congo, and in China, Japan, Pakistan, Indonesia, Philippines, Taiwan, India, Mongolia, Egypt, and Korean branch churches and local sanctuary members, those who are attending the service on the internet all over the world, and television viewing audiences. The happening in today's passage Numbers chapter 21 took place after the exodus of the people of Israel. Israelites were slaves in Egypt for 400 years and cried out to God to save them. So God sent Moses, showed his amazing power through him, and set the Israelites free from the slavery. They left for the promised land Canaan with great expectations. But soon, they realized the reality was quite different from what they had expected. They thought that they would go into the land flowing with milk and honey immediately after they left Egypt. They thought that they would enjoy only glory and blessings after the exodus from Egypt as God's chosen people. But God first guided them to the wilderness. It was because they had to have the qualifications to enter into the blessed land. They had to prepare the vessel to receive blessings by overcoming hardships relying on God. But the Israelites did not understand the will of God and whenever they faced difficulties, they only grumbled and complained. Finally, even after they reached the land of Canaan, they could not show their faith to take that land, so they had to go through the 40-year trials in the wilderness. 
As you accept the Lord and continue your Christian life, you face trials. Some finish it in one year, or some others receive trials for 5, 10, 20, 30, or 40 years. Some of those so-called born Christians stay in trials for even 60 and 70 years. During the trials for 40 years, they kept on complaining against God and grudged against Moses whenever they had hardships. Then every time Moses prayed to God and opened the way to go through all the hardships, they could continue on their journey through the faith of only one person, Moses. The people's resentment and complaining brought about a great disaster. They could not go into the land of Canaan directly, but had to wander around in the wilderness, and they complained about this greatly. Numbers chapter 21 verse 5 says, And the people spoke against God and Moses, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? They didn't even die, but they concluded they would die. For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this miserable food. They were living without anything to eat or water, but they said, We loathe this miserable food. They are saying the God-given food was miserable. God saved them from the 400 years of slavery. But now they were complaining that God was going to let them die in the wilderness. Also about the manna that God himself gave to them, they said it was miserable food. God was angry with them, and suddenly fiery serpents with deadly poison appeared. It was only after many people had died because of the serpents that they came to Moses and repented. When Moses prayed for them, God gave him a way to avoid the disaster. He said, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a standard. And it shall come about that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, he shall live. They would certainly die if they were bitten by the fiery serpent. Was there any hospital in the wilderness? But God said they would live if they looked at the shape of the fire serpent on the standard. You think you'd have looked at it and lived, but still, there were people who did not look at it and died. What would you have done? Would you have looked at it? Moses made a shape of fire serpent with brass and said it. If anyone who was bitten looked at it, he could save his life. Viewing audiences, this is the story of today's passage. Then what are the lessons that God wants us to learn here? First, it is that we have to receive the answer from God whenever we have any problems. God the Almighty is the one who controls not only the fiery serpent, but also all things of the whole world. It was God who allowed the fiery serpents to appear. It was also God who saved the people from those serpents. Of course, God did not just let the fiery serpents appear suddenly. In the wilderness where the Israelites were traveling, there were many fiery serpents and scorpions. But these things could not harm the people because they were under God's protection. We experienced something like that before. In 1991, we had whole church summer retreat at Guryongpo Beach in Chungnam province. At that time, we'd have summer retreats for more than a month since we had it from students to men's and women's mission. At that time, we experienced something like this in the Bible. The villagers there were surprised by us. We kind of made a whole new village there. 
We made our dining and accommodation facility and toilets and big tents. Also, we dug wells. We made many facilities, so from a distance, it looked like a village. Our member camped there, and if they put up their tent on the sand, it would be very hot. So there was a hillside, and they put up their tents on the hill, because there were trees and shadows there. But after the retreats were over, while we were taking down the tents, there were poisonous snakes. Our Levites and other workers were doing that work, and they saw the snakes. They were surprised. We asked the local people and they told us snakes were living in that hill, so we were very surprised. But God didn't let us see a single snake for five weeks during the summer retreats. None of our members saw any snake. Only when we were pulling down the tents could we see them. We all gave glory to God. If the snakes were found in the middle, the news must have been spread and our members wouldn't have dared to camp on the hill. They must have been uncomfortable. But because God was protecting us, although there were so many poisonous snakes in the hill, we couldn't see a single snake. Only after we finished everything, and were taking down the tents, God le let us know that He was protecting us. Now the people sinned by complaining against God. So God did not protect them anymore, and the fiery serpents could, not, could now harm the people. Therefore, the people of Israel had to find the cause of the problem in their relationship with God and gain the solution to the problem from God. It is not only about the people of Israel. We also have to go before God and find the answer to any kind of problem that we go through on this earth. Here, the fiery serpent refers to the enemy devil and Satan. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 14, God says to the serpent that tempted Eve, And dust shall you eat all the days of your life. Here, the dust refers to Adam and his descendants, who sinned and went back to the flesh. Also, it refers to those believers who do not live by God's word and unbelievers. Since Adam's fall, the serpent, namely the enemy devil, brings about trials and tests to the people of flesh who live in sins, taking them as their food. They face various diseases, accidents, and disasters. The worldly people attribute everything to coincidence when they get a disease or meet disasters, accidents, problems, and difficulties. But God's children should never do this. It's not coincidence. If our God protects us, they all happen. 1 John chapter 5, verse 18 says, We know that no one who is born of God sins, but he who was born of God keeps him, and the evil one does not touch him. One who is born of God does not sin, which means he lives by God's word, being in the light. He who was born of God will keep this person safe. Our Lord and the Holy Spirit will keep him safe so that the evil one cannot touch him. Even though there were many fiery serpents, when God protected the Israelites, the serpents could not harm them. Likewise, there are many disasters in this world, but they don't have to face with tests and trials when God protects the believers. Therefore, when believers have problems, they have to find the reason why they could not be protected by God. Just as the people of Israel repented and came before Moses, 
they have to repent of their wrongdoings and come before God. If they repent thoroughly and tear down the wall of sin and come to the light according to God's word, any kind of problem can be solved. The second thing we should realize from today's passage is that when we go through the trials of faith, we should receive them with only thanks and joy. James chapter 1 verse 4 says, And let endurance have its perfect result, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. God allows trials of faith to His children so that they might have faith as pure as gold and prepare their vessels to receive blessings. To succeed even in this world, there are trials. Very good professional sports players like baseball, soccer, basketball, volleyball players and boxers become excellent players after going through difficult trials and training. It's same with music, with our Nice Orchestra, pianists, politicians, and with businessmen. Sometimes, they feel like they are hopeless, suffering from many hardships. We see some businessmen wanting to just commit suicide. But after they overcome those hardships, they finally succeed. It's same with medical doctors. It's not easy to become a medical doctor. They have to study for six years in college after high school graduation. And it's not all. They have to go through difficult trainings. In Korea, there is strict hierarchy among doctors. So they have to go through hardships coming from seniors. It takes so many things to make one doctor. Then if we think it is easy to make one God's true child who will enter into heavenly kingdom, how can we say we have faith? That's why we need human cultivation on this earth. Through this, the truthfulness and falsehood, light and darkness, and spirit and flesh are distinguished. Through the trials, really true children of God and those who are not will be distinguished and God will gain His true children. The patriarchs in the Bible also went through the days of trials with many kinds of hardships until they received the blessings that God had promised them. King David, even after he was anointed as the king, had to run away from Saul who was trying to kill him. Joseph suffered from many hardships for 13 years until he became the prime minister of Egypt at the age of 30. While they were going through the hardships, they humbled themselves more and more, cast off all sins, and finally prepared the vessel to receive the blessings. Only if we prepare the proper vessel to receive blessings, God will comfort us for all the trials that we have gone through and reward us with overflowing blessings. The trials that the Israelites had to go through in the wilderness were also a step to get the blessed land of Canaan. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 15 to 16 says, He led you through the great and terrible wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water. He brought water for you out of the rock of flint. In the wilderness, He fed you manna which your fathers did not know, that He might humble you and that he might test you to do good for you in the end. Why did God do this? Why did they have to go through trials? It was to humble them and test them so that God could bless them in the end. Therefore, you see, if you humble yourself, you won't have to go through trials. But because you try to lift yourself up, you face trials. It will be the same between husband and wife. If you humble yourself, you won't face any trials. Those who are humble already have meek heart and have cast off forms of evil. 
They don't have pride or arrogance, but serve others. Those who serve will be great in the kingdom of heaven. Only when you humble yourself can you serve others. If you want to be served, you cannot serve others. But if you humble yourself, you will serve others. You will consider others better than you. God searches for this kind of children. That's why there are trials and various tests. Through them, you should humble yourself. But if you don't, you will still be in trials even after 10, 20, 30, 40, even 50 years of Christian life. So please finish your tests quickly. Some of you can finish it in one year, but others still suffer for so many decades. If you are a born Christian and more than 70 and are still under trials, why is that? It's because you didn't humble yourself. If you did, trials would have been finished and tests would have passed long ago. If our elders humble themselves, you will soon receive blessings. But why is it so difficult? You will be guided to prosperity. In this world, many people do not want to humble themselves. God's word tells us to humble ourselves and serve others and do not seek our own, but people don't want to humble themselves. But those who do will go through trials quickly, and God will lift them up, bless them, and let them give glory to God. Some of you have been under trials for 5, 10, 15, or 20 years of tests and trials, and please finish them quickly. In my case, until this day since I accepted the Lord, I only had prosperity. There was no problem. As you have been seeing, what didn't go well for us? Only if God commanded, I just obeyed even impossible things with faith. The result was always prosperity and blessings. Because I humbled myself and obeyed God, even some tests were tests intended for blessings. Trials were trials, just another step for greater blessings. You have seen that after these trials and tests, greater blessings followed. He might humble you and that he might test you to do good for you in the end. If the people truly believed in and trusted God, they should not have complained about the difficulties in the wilderness, but thanked God for his blessings and changed themselves. How thankful it is just by the fact that we met God, accepted the Lord, are saved and are going to the heavenly kingdom. Why do we have to complain? God always wants to give us good things. It's only that we don't have the proper vessel to receive His blessings. So we should never complain against God. He gave us His one and only Son. He leads us to the heavenly kingdom and lets us live there happily forever. And how can we complain? It doesn't make sense. After going through the trials with thanks and joy, they could surely go into the promised land of Canaan. Only when we prepare the vessel to receive blessings through trials and prove our faith by passing the tests, can the enemy devil not object to it when God gives us blessings. But if we complain and grumble in the hardships, the trials will not end but last longer and blessings will not come. Speaking the words of complaints and resentment is a proof that you do not have the vessel prepared to receive blessings. Romans chapter 8 verse 18 says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. 
Yes, the sufferings of this present time cannot be compared to the glory we'll receive in the heavenly kingdom. Also, James chapter 5, verse 11 says, Behold, we count those blessed who endured, who have heard of the endurance of Job, and have seen the outcome of the Lord's dealings, that the Lord is full of compassion and is merciful. I hope you will give thanks to God and endure until the end by trusting the merciful God in any kind of situation. But you shouldn't just endure. You have to find yourself. Job also tried to try hard to meet God, and when he did, all his problems were solved. Also, I hope you will enjoy all the blessings that are prepared for you by changing yourself as God wants you to be. Viewing audiences, the third point you can realize is that of the love of the Father who helped the Israelites gain faith by looking at the bronze serpent. When they were bitten by the fiery serpents, they could live if they looked at the bronze serpent. The Almighty God could have healed them with His power without making them look at the bronze serpent. Just like the centurion who confessed just say the word, if the Israelites had faith, God could just say be healed. But they did not have that kind of faith. Regardless of the greatness of God's power, if they did not believe, they had to die by the poison of the fiery serpents. So God gave them a symbol to look up to help them have faith more easily. The serpent was hurting them. When they saw the shape of that fire serpent that was hung on the standard, they could more firmly believe that God already saved them from the disaster of the fiery serpents. In my childhood in countryside, after people killed a snake, they hung it on a fence or a tree. It was to see that the snake was completely dry and dead. Likewise, when people believe something, there is a big difference in their confidence according to whether or not they see it with their eyes. The reason why our church has to show the evidences of the living God lies here. John chapter 4 verse 48 says, Jesus therefore said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you simply will not believe. Even though the Bible talks about the Almighty God and preachers say believe in the Lord, those who have hardened hearts are not willing to believe. Even among the believers, there are many people who compromise with the world and do not live by the word of God. But if people see, hear, and experience the powerful works of God, even unbelievers are more likely to accept God. Also, believers can have true faith and live by God's word. Viewing audiences, then what, how is this incident of the people of Israel receiving salvation by looking at the fire serpent on the standard related to us today? As said in John chapter 3 verses 14 to 15 says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in may in him have eternal life. This incident symbolizes the cross of Jesus. At that time, at the time of Exodus, Jesus' crucifixion was already recorded. The sinless Jesus took all the sins of sinners and was hung on the cross like the fiery serpent was hung on the standard. However, while serpent is Satan, how can we say looking at the serpent on the standard and looking at Jesus on the cross are the same thing. It is because Jesus taking the cross means the destruction of the enemy devil and Satan. Looking at Jesus on the cross is to look with faith at the destruction of the enemy devil and Satan's authority of death. And through this faith we gain eternal life. In this church, 
You can witness and experience so many signs and wonders and God's powerful works as recorded in the Bible. That's why evil ones being instigated by the enemy devil try to stop people from attending our church. You see only good things in our church. We hear gracious praises. We pray always. God tells us to pray continually. In all the churches, they knew the will of God and the Lord very well, and they gathered at the sanctuary every day. It was even more difficult to gather at the sanctuary every day than today. Why they had to work hard to make their ends meet each day. Still they gathered at the sanctuary every day. And in our church you gather every day at sanctuary through Daniel prayer meeting. Also if you are a believer you should be healthy. And most of our members and family members since they began to attend our church have not been to any hospital for even 10 years. So who are the sons who disturb people not to attend this church where members live within the word of God and faith having hope of heaven? In the message of the cross, you already listened to the providence of breaking the authority of the enemy devil and Satan by Jesus' crucifixion. Because the wages of sin is death, according to the law of the spiritual realm, Adam and his descendants, who became sinners as a result of Adam's fall, had to be punished. Namely, they had to live under the authority of the enemy devil and Satan, suffering from all kinds of tests and trials. Then after they died, they had to fall into hell. To save mankind, Jesus came to this earth. At this time, the enemy devil instigated evil people and killed the sinless Jesus on the cross. The devil thought they would enjoy the authority of death forever only if they killed Jesus, who came as a savior. But by doing this, the evil lost the authority of death. According to the law of the spiritual realm, death penalty applies only to sinners. So the enemy devil and Satan violated the law of the spiritual realm by killing Jesus who had neither original sin nor self-committed sins. Since they violated the law of the spiritual realm, they had to pay the price too. Namely, they had to give up their authority over death of all those who believe Jesus as their savior. Viewing audiences, the crucifixion of Jesus is a clear historical fact and anyone can be saved if he believes in Jesus who was hung on the cross as the Savior. Also, when we pray with the faith in the name of the Lord, we can get away from all kinds of tests and trials. But even though Jesus redeemed all men, those who do not believe this fact cannot receive salvation. The people of Israel could be saved only if they looked at the serpent on the standard. But those who had hardened hearts and did not obey, had no choice but to die of the poison of the fiery serpent. Please put yourself in that situation. Would you have looked at the fiery serpent? You probably think yes, but many of you wouldn't have looked at it. Even at that time, many people died because they didn't look at it. It's very easy, but even today we proclaim to people to believe in Jesus. We tell the news about signs and wonders and power of God. The people try not to believe. Some of you even in this congregation do not believe. Sometimes wives tell me their stories. Some of their husbands wouldn't believe the works of God taking place when they see Manmin magazine video or read newspapers. They say they just made it up. They are faking it. But it's absolute truth and fact. Then after they get sick themselves, they confess to me that they, that they doubted and did not believe. If you just try to believe a little bit, you can believe, but you try not to believe. In your thought, you think it's just impossible and you don't try to believe. If you try to look for the evidences, there are countless evidences in this church. You can ask those who are giving their testimonies yourself. You can ask how they were sick and how they were healed by God. Numerous people are healed and you can ask them. 
So many people who received death sentence in the hospital were healed by prayer. And you can ask them yourself. Similarly, even today, we can just accept Jesus Christ and look at Him with faith, but those who do not believe cannot be saved, and they will still fall into hell after suffering from hardships and trials. But how thankful it is for you that you believe the cross of the Lord and are saved. Also because you witness numerous evidences of the power of God in this church, you can surely believe in the Lord, cast off sins, and lead a spiritual Christian life. Let me conclude the message, viewing audiences. Everyone who looks at the cross of the Lord can avoid all curses and disasters. When God's children face some kind of problem, or if they want to solve a certain problem and receive blessings, they should not just confess in their prayers saying, I believe. They first have to repent of their sins. Then, they have to change their heart into truth and come out as God through children. The reason why God cultivates man on this earth is to gain through children who love God from the depth of their heart. If you truly love God from the depth of your heart, you will not face any trials but receive blessings in all things. But when some people are faced with problems, they want to solve that problem only and ask and demand of God like children. In the eyes of others, they seem to be repenting and coming before Him with faith. But some people do not try to change their inner heart by checking themselves. Still others reluctantly practice the word because they feel God is a fearful God rather than feeling His love. But because this is not true faith, it is difficult to receive the answer with this kind of heart. Also, even if they receive the answer by asking God persistently, next step is the problem. They keep away from God as time goes and finally fall away from salvation. How can this be a blessing? Therefore, the important thing is in solving your problem is not just persistently asking God. You have to find your sins and evil with a humble heart and change yourself to love God. If you truly love God with your heart and are loved by God, there will be no problem that cannot be solved. That way, you should touch and move God's heart by offering Him prayers of love and goodness. Then, God will certainly hear your prayer and answer to you in the name of Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for us. I hope you will always remember the love of the Father who has given us His one and only Son to bless us. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will quickly recover the lost image of God, live a blessed life on this earth, and also dwell in the glory of New Jerusalem in the kingdom of heaven. I will pray for all those who are sick. Place your hand on sick parts and infirmities of your body and receive this prayer. If you are not ill, place your hand on your chest and receive this prayer for the desires of your heart. The work of the Almighty God transcends time and space. He will also work according to your faith. No matter where you are, when you receive this prayer in faith, you will surely experience the astonishing power of God. Hallelujah, the Almighty God of love. Lay your hand on all your children, on all GCN viewers who receive this prayer on television. Lay your hand and manifest your work that transcends time and space on every viewer who receives this prayer in faith in every corner of the world. Give each of them the faith by which they can believe and drive out all the power of negative thoughts and doubts. Drive out all trials and sufferings. Scorch by the fire of the Holy Spirit and cleanse with the blood of our Lord from head to toe, the five versera and the six entrails, each joint and all nerves 
tissues and cells manifest the most high part of creation. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, bacteria and weaknesses go away. All contagious diseases go away. All terminal diseases, endemic diseases and newly discovered diseases be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Be cleansed, be strengthened. Let there be healing of gastric cancer, lung cancer, uterine cancer, intestinal cancer, and skin cancer, age, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, heart diseases, lung diseases, all kinds of women's diseases, hypertension, hypotension, diabetes, skin diseases, and inflammation. May polio, paralysis, arthritis, and herniated disc be healed and made perfect. May the pain from lumbago, headache, and neuralgia disappear. May all after effects from a variety of accidents be cleansed and made perfect. May cold, flu, fatigue from sickness and thyroid diseases be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and be cleansed. Epilepsy, autism, depression, nervous breakdown and all kinds of mental diseases go away. May all darkness be driven away and let there be joy and peace in their hearts. Father God, by the most high power of creation, may all that is weak be made perfect and whole again. May all that is paralyzed become loosened and may the crippled walk and jump. May the deemed eyesight be brightened. May those with troubled hearing hear well. May the blind receive sight. May the deaf come to hear. May the mute begin to speak. Father, bless those who are unable to conceive. Rejoin broken bones and make perfect and whole all burned parts of the body. Cleanse by the fire of the Holy Spirit those who suffer from addiction of narcotics, drugs, toxicants, and poison. May the dead and dead nerves and cells revive. May all darkness be forced away, and may all evil spirits be driven out. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, go away. May all their messengers be also driven out. May all the power of darkness, evil and wicked spirits, dishonest and crafty spirits, estranging and deceiving spirits be driven out. May all chains of injustice be loosened, darkness go away. May the light come, Father God, strengthen their spirits as well as their flesh. Give them the strength to call out to you. Give them the strength to throw away their sins and become sanctified. As each of their soul gets along well, may all in life go well with them, answer the desires of their hearts, imploration and prayer. Add faith, hope and love, and may their families also come to hear and believe in the good news. Protect them from accidents and disasters and bless them to lead prosperous lives without hindrance. Protect all God's children at home, work, and business with the fiery wall of the Holy Spirit and the eyes of the Lord that are like blazing fire. Bless them whether they come in or go out and bless them to lend to many people but borrow from no one. Give them wisdom and understanding and allow them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Give all ministers and workers of the Lord the ability to carry out the tasks you have given them. May there also be great revival at each church. Lead your children so that they may give glory to you, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do in life. Manifest your work so that their lips may testify, I have met him, I have experienced God. I have received his answers and I have received God's blessing. Father God, I thank you. May you alone receive all the glory. I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.